Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in. Welcome in. We'll begin in about one minute. Thank you for joining us this afternoon after lunch. Aaron beat me to it. Sorry. That's okay. That's right. I said I was going to let you guys do your thing, and then I just can't help myself. All good. I got sidetracked. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Susan Jinx, Falls Church City, Elizabeth from Fairfax County. Very good. So say I've seen Elizabeth's name a lot of places. Indeed. All right, and. I guess it's conceivable you could go to multiple sessions, right? You could have two laptops open. If you had decent broadband, you could be multitasking in multi-Zoom rooms in this world yeah. that we were talking about, in which I grew up with the landline drug into the closet for privacy. So anyway. <laughs> All right, wonderful. It's 1230, and I am going to stop that from ringing, and I'm going to pass this. <laughs> thought it was mine. <laughs> so did I. I'm going to pass it over to Karen Richardson, who will um, introduce our topic today and, and get us going. Welcome, everyone. OK, great. So welcome, everyone. Um, I am going to share my screen here just briefly. And I love the fact that Craig's picture is mine. Um, that always cracks me up every time. So. Um, I am so excited for this session, and so I don't want to ramble on the way sometimes I do. Um, Kim Lane Clark was our keynote speaker this morning. Um, she is a fierce advocate for the three young women who are in the room here, even though they may not know it. Um, they are from Code RVA, which is rich, which is the state's really. I was going to say Richmond. It's in Richmond, but it's really the state computer science high school. I had the opportunity to work with. Um, at least Jasmine and maybe a few of the others this summer as part of our virtual conference. Um, and it was great to have some conversations with them and, and hear their experiences with virtual learning, with computer science, and just sort of life in general from what it looks like being in high school these days. So we're also joined today by Kumi Gorenson, who is their principal. I hope I got that right. Um, and really the goal of this session is for it to be a conversation between Kim and these young women. So I am gonna share my screen and please everyone say a prayer for my rural broadband here. Um, that would be nice and I will present this. Um, and then I'm gonna get out of the way. I'd like Kim to take a second to introduce, reintroduce herself and then each of the young women will tell us about, uh, will introduce themselves. And we've asked them to start by just talking briefly about their experiences with virtual learning. Um, we know that's been sort of on everybody's mind. And then from there, we're hoping for a conversation. Folks in the chat room, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to add those as well. So I'm going to mute and probably turn my camera off because sometimes I forget and do, um, you know, Anyway, you all know how it is. Well, life with a camera on all the time. Anyway, Kim Lane, please introduce yourselves and then we'll work from left to right with our young women today. Thank you so much, um, Karen. Um, this is amazing to be able to be on the panel with you all. I, I, I um, am Kimberly Lane Clark, um, as Karen stated, but it's more importantly to know who you all are. Um, you all are definitely our future. Um, I am um, the Director of Engagement for an ed tech company, I'm previously a Director of Blended Learning um, for School District right outside of Dallas, Texas. And I do a lot of advocacy work for young ladies like you. I believe in you and your future matters. Um, so thank you so much. So I assume it's my turn. Uh, sure, we can go, yeah, did I say left to right? I probably meant right to left, who knows? I barely know what my name is right now. Kelly, go for it. Okay, hi, um, I'm Kelly Runyon and for me with virtual learning, I'm doing pretty well with it when it comes to getting assignments done. It's definitely different than what school was in person. It's more focused, I would say, on you try to make sure that all your assignments get done and turn in on time. And it's definitely different from learning in person because you don't get the opportunity to 
really have your teacher look over what you're doing to be able to be behind you and tell you that something isn't working the way it's supposed to be working. But personally, I think that I'm doing pretty well with it. Thank you, Kelly. Um, my name is Kelly Nichols. I'm from Carter Day High School. I'm a 10th grader. And my experiences with virtual learning so far have been extremely um, pleasant, especially because I feel like I have so much um, support and inspiration from my teachers, the staff at Carter Day, and all of my peers. And it is very hard trying to learn material at the moment because a lot of it is you know, everything is uh, everything we learn in class. All of the assignments are now home. Um. Hello, I don't, Kaylee, I don't believe we caught the last end of what you said. Um, would you like to go over that again? Thank you, Jasmine. So I'm sorry. My mic is a little, um, acting a little weird today. Sorry. So um, I talked about um, having a lot of assignments and homework, but I do love the fact that um, I have so many teachers and faculty and peers supporting me during virtual learning because it's kind of tough right now um but i do enjoy um teachers reaching out making sure that i don't feel overwhelmed thank you um my name is jasmine simmons i'm in 10th grade and my experience with virtual learning is the take on it i understand why we have to do it it's just for me personally, it's a little harder. I'm a people person. I need to be in person with my teachers to understand the lesson plan and go over different things virtually. I would have to email them. But if I was in class, I could just be like, walk over to their desk and say, hey, can you help me with this? And it's different things like that. Um, but thank, yes, definitely teachers and peers are always there to help out whenever you need it. And always an email, text, call away from anything you need. Um, I think it's just everyone's still getting adjusted to it, even though it's been months now. It's just a very brand new thing and we're just going to have to get with it. But I, I am getting used to it a lot more than I was maybe a week ago like it's just it changes every single day but turning in assignments and contacting my teachers is probably what is the hardest thing to me by talking to my teachers asking them a question because I want to be able to do my work and show my teachers I can do it but when it gets to a point where I legitimately do not know what to do you have to always reach out to someone so that's my take on virtual learning as of right now So perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to stop sharing just because I it confuses me and we want to see you all talking anyway. Um, so I'm going to throw out the first one and then and then back off a little bit. But this is something that I've been talking about with my colleagues. Um, what would you keep? Let's say the virus goes away and everybody gets a vaccine and we know that we can go back to exactly the way the world was on March 8th. Do we want to do that or are there some things that worked that we'd want to keep as we talk about how this might transform schools i'd love to hear from you and then i'm shutting up because i know kim has ideas i'm sure too but that's the one i'd start you with what would you keep um personally i would for my personal experiences, I will keep more things personally than school experiences. Um, I had many great things happen to me in my personal life that probably would not have happened if we didn't have this pandemic. School-wise, I a lot of things have just changed. I, there's really nothing for myself that I can look at that would be like, you know what, we can keep this. I like this part of school. I guess the only thing I do like is the fact that we get mailed certain assignments or certain things. That's always nice to get mail 
Um, even I know some people disagree saying that younger people don't mail, but I mail all the time. So I like getting mail from people. So that's one of the things I do like about the, um, that I would keep. But other than that, um, maybe I, I, I'm just a people person. So I need everything virtually. Personally, there have been other things that I've liked, but school wise, there's nothing I would really keep. So um, answering that question, one thing I would keep is from my experience, I'm like Jazz and I've had some pretty good things and some negative things happen to me obviously over the pandemic, but myself personally, I have asthma. So my immune system isn't great. I like the ability that we are at home. We don't have to worry about other kids being sick during school and coming and possibly getting you sick. And then I would be out maybe two or three weeks. And then I'd have to catch up. I like the ability that if we don't feel comfortable coming back, the school district doesn't force us to come back under penalty. I do appreciate that. But other than that, there's not many things I would change because as Kaylee said earlier, all of our assignments are now homework. Everything is now graded. So there's more of a pressure to make sure that your grade doesn't drop because sometimes it'll be where you can get one C and then your grade will drop maybe nine points and you can get 10 assignments in a row that are perfect 100s and it'll barely go up. So I feel like the ability to stay home helps, but I definitely agree with Jasmine in the sense that I liked school more before. So the way I look at it is each individual student, you know, is struggling in their own way and their own, you know, they have problems at home as far as internet and they have trouble reaching out to teachers a lot. So I do love the fact that teachers are without, you know, any context, just want to reach out and make sure that you feel like, even if you're doing well, you know, they'll feel like, hey, are you doing okay? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do, do you need help? And I do love that thing. And I think we should keep that. And I think we should even expand that more to where it's, if teachers can see that you are struggling, um, they can definitely help you out. And it's something where that's, I feel like that's something where I like the fact that sometimes we can be face to face, but I do love the fact that Google Meet has that where we can meet virtually and just a one-on-one, -on -one, not where a teacher is in the middle of a class or in the middle of doing other things, you know, they set aside that time and they, actually are like, okay, if you need my help, I'm in this call all day, and I can definitely help you if you need my help. But like Kelly was talking about, grades have such a impact on um, your overall grade, so that once you, you get from an assignment, drops your grade down horribly, and it takes a lot to bring it back up. And but on the flip side of that, it is great that teachers still want to reach out to you and make sure that with that C, is there something that they can do to help you um, bring up that or get an alternative, like an extra credit or a new assignment that can help you bring up that grade as well. Is it okay if I add something real quick? So one thing I'd also like to add is that not a lot of people think of this when they think of virtual school. Learning a language virtually is extremely difficult. Our school had that before. We were always virtual, but we had tutors in person. But trying to learn a language, like I was personally in Latin too, it was extremely difficult because one, for some languages, you don't have a lot of references. And then you can't really meet with a person that knows how to speak it and that can help you, which can lead to grades declining. But I definitely say that that's not something like those type of classes like health and PE languages electives those aren't classes people really think about when it comes to the pandemic in school. Yes I'm sorry I'm just making a thread here. Um, I agree with Kelly on that we our school personally has changed what we use for virtual um, languages so just that whole change added on to the pandemic change made things a lot more complicated than they would have been before. Um, they, it just, it, it's a lot of stress. Um, that's, that's the main thing that's coming from this. 
um, just stress. That's what I would definitely take away from this um, thing. It's high school's already hard enough. Then we have this. So it's just the stress factor of making sure everything's turned in, making sure this is done, making sure you talk to this teacher. That's probably the absolute, well, not the absolute worst thing, but it's, it's a big factor. Um, so I don't know, Karen, if you wanted me to jump in or not, um, I am listening to you all and I just first want to applaud you all just for your ability to, to first be on Zoom. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just sit back and think um, when I was in your seat, I don't even think I would have the, uh, enough courage to do what you all are doing. And you say it so eloquently. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I, I applaud that. I know we're supposed to be talking about virtual <laughs> learning, Karen. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I just applaud you all. Um, it, it, it's just fascinating to me. But uh, just in regards to, to virtual learning, I, I, I hear you all. And I, I, I definitely, um, <laughs> I, I see all of it happening and it's so different. And, but for you all to be able to conform to it and just, you know, go with the punches, do you all think that your teachers or, you know, just your experiences have just really helped you be able to function online and virtual? I know, um, Jasmine, you say that, you know, it's really not your forte to be online, which is fine because, you know, I'd rather be with y'all and talk to y'all and go have lunch afterwards. And we all take pictures and do a TikTok so y'all can teach me how to do a TikTok um, because I really struggle with it. Uh, my nephew says I'm horrible. He's tells me I'm like an old lady or something. So I would love to do like a TikTok with y'all and things. So, but we can't, but um, just how, like just prior to now, prior to 2020, when I think like the world fell away, do you think that um, it's, 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 it's prepared you to be virtual? Um. Oh, okay. I personally feel like our school has definitely done that. Our school was already like half virtual. So we, we had an upper hand with that. We did finish our schooling over this, over the um, rest of the school year. So we kind of already knew, I think just getting back into the groove is what made things harder. Um, I, I'm trying to remember everything you said. Um, fine, I, fine, fine. I just, I just wanted to know like, I hear that how you all are stating what Karen is, you know, said about, you know, your experiences in virtual learning and, and <clears throat> what you feel about it. But I just, I always wanted to know as an as a educator that's been in the classroom prior to now, I mean, I taught for 11 years and I taught your age group. So I taught, you know, um, um, 11th and 12th graders and, you know, ninth graders and 10th graders. And so I... <laughs> You know, I always wonder, did I prepare you all? You know, did we prepare you all? We were pre preparing you all. Do you think that if they say right now, you know what, we're going to cut out and you're going to graduate, will you be able to function in society and like work for Google or work for Twitter? Like, what would you be able to do? Would you be able to go to college or would you be able to, like, what would you be able to do? I just always wondered that because, you know, I, I, I strive and be a good educator. Um, so, yes. I think another thing that's key is communication and um, connection. All the like Kaylee and Kelly are like well, my good friends that already helps. And then our school is just close. Like we are tight and that's, that's another good thing that our school has. I can go talk to anyone or any, well, not in ninth graders because I haven't personally met them, but I can go and talk to anyone at any grade level and almost every time get along and they will understand what I'm asking them. Um, yes, we all are on the newspaper staff that Kay, um, Kaylee has created last year in ninth grade. Go ahead, Kaylee. Um, but we 
we just a close school. I think that's a great thing about having a smaller school than a large 800,000 kids school. We can always go to someone and ask something. I have connections with teachers. I, I, like my teachers are not friends, but they're, they're there for me. They're always, I can always talk to them. Even Ms. Gornson, I have several emails with Ms. Gornson just about anything because um, I know that, that she's there for me if I need to talk to her. So I think that's a good thing that helped us before we had to transition. We were already close enough to where we knew what communications we had available to go to. Yeah, relationships yeah. are important. I definitely agree with Jasmine, where relationships are definitely important to create a building block where if you, you know, things go wrong or something happens that, you know, we have a steady base to work off of. Um, and I did love the fact that because we were, we did a lot of our homework and stuff online, you know, we were computer based and a lot of the stuff we did was through like Canvas. Um, so a lot of that was virtual. So in the transition to going online, which in March, um, that was definitely not as hard of a transition as I know other schools um, had. And I'm, and I'm very grateful for that. And I feel like I actually felt more prepared then than I feel like I would have at my home school, which was really nice. Um, and like Jasmine was talking about where, you know, we get to reach out to teachers. So even if we are struggling, you know, we can feel like we can reach out to teachers. I personally have done that with my um, my sponsor for the newspaper. Her name is Miss Northrop, and I go to her if I ever have questions or I have problems or, you know, I need help. She's there for me and she doesn't, I don't ever feel like I'm like a burden on her while she's doing her work. I feel like I can actually go to someone and not feel like I'm not getting anything out of it. Even if I'm struggling or if I have problems or issues, you know, it's not, I don't feel like I'm the problem or the issue, you know, I don't feel like I'm the reason that, you know, stuff is going wrong. Um, and it's so easy that I can just, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go to virtual learning and I'm ready to go back to hybrid because I know I have the relationships with my teachers and I have the experience being virtual. And that's been a great, great um, just backing for me. Oh, that's awesome. Karen, did you have another question or anything? I don't wanna hijack it. <laughs> oh, we can't hear you or I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I call in via my phone and I forget to unmute the phone part. I was gonna say, no, I'm. this is fabulous. I think the interesting piece for me is that distinction. And I, I kind of remember being in high school, but it was a long, long time ago. But yeah, high school's about grades and those sorts of things. Um, and Kim's looking, you know, kind of past that in terms of, could you work for Google or could you, are those the kinds of things we're preparing you for? Um, and and I was kind of hoping that would we could start pivoting towards that maybe as we do this. I, I don't know a lot of companies who are going to go back to face to face anymore. Big cost savings and those sorts of things. I, I'm hearing that it could be a year or two and and working at home. So um, there is a, a question to uh, Kim. I think this might be for you. So any advice for your stu for the students, for the young women in the room as they look to graduation and the next steps? You told a little of your story this morning. I did, and, and you know, I, I, I was hearing you all just, just, just speaking and I, I was looking down and I, I, I doodle a lot. I have like all these sticky notes, it's really weird, but I doodle a lot when I'm listening. And I think people think that I'm not listening to them, but I really am, like, it's crazy. I have so many doodles over here that I was just doing, but I was listening to you all. Um, and so I, I, I don't want you to rush and forget what you're doing right now in high school. I see a lot of you all so you're so focused and the ambition is just, you know, it's, 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 it's like coming out of you, you know, at full force. And I, I want you to, that's something that I wish that I did when I was in high school was just 
seize the moment of being in high school, seize the moment of going to movies, seize the moment of, you know, we used to have, you know, landline phones and we used to call and hang up on people and, and prank people and, you know, call people on three way and things like that. And we had pagers and we would, you know, we would do things like that, but seize the moments that y'all can't call anybody on three way and put somebody on hold. That doesn't, it's a little bit different for y'all, but just seize the moment of being in high school. I know that you're preparing. I know that you want the best grades to get the into the best colleges, into the, you know, and, and get the best job. And you're looking forward to that. But I think I did that so much. I forgot my high school years. I forgot what it meant to be a high school student. And now it's gone and I can't get it back. And I regret it. Even in college, I was always like, you know, I would tell my mom, I'm so ready to graduate. You know, I'm so tired of people telling me what to do. I'm so tired of you telling me I can't spend any money. Like, cause she was paying for my college. And, and so now I look back, I, I wish that I, I had to went to more sorority parties. I did, you know, um, pledge in the sorority, um, which was good. Um, but I, I wish that I, you know, went to more parties and I was, it really wasn't, it, not that I'm saying that you not should, should not worry about grades. That's the most important thing that you should do. Please don't go home and say, well, mom, she said I shouldn't do my own work today. No, do that. But just see the moment. Um, I definitely think that you are preparing, but just breathe in that, that, that genuine, um, uh, that, that you have, you just have a genuineness of, of being in high school. And, and I just think it, it's, it's amazing that you're doing what you're doing right now. I mean, the school that you're ex describing is just amazing. And it, it's just, I just love it. And so I could just go on and on and on, but I just hear you all. And I, and I want you to just stop and think and just have fun. Just have fun just for a day or two and then get back to work. <laughs> Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, you're on mute again. Shoot. Okay, the phone. I'm sorry. See, they're so much better than me. And like Jasmine, I saw you. You're talking and you were reading the chat at the same time, Jasmine. Like, there's no way I could do that. Forget yeah, it. I, anyway, I worked uh, Zoom this morning. I was like, what is this, <laughs> this black thing on here? I don't know if this black bar is What's happening. The only add on I would say to that is, yeah, we're always so busy preparing like in elementary school, you're preparing for middle school and middle school and high school and high school and college and college, you're ready for your job. And I think Kimberly and I are similar. I'm on about job five or six now. And I've been a private consultant, which means I do like a variety of different projects to get to work on too. So I think one of the excite, exciting pieces about this time is that notion that my mom, my dad and my sister did, they got full-time jobs. They worked for the same company for 40 years. They, they retired. I don't, you know, seize the day on that too. There are so many opportunities out there. And I would be surprised if any of you are doing the same thing when you graduate from college college that you do later. There's just so much of that possibility as well, but it can be scary. And I gone right back to what Kim said. I, you're so courageous. You all are so much more brave than I would have ever been um, to do these kinds of things. So a couple more minutes, uh, questions from the chat, uh, other comments, Kimberly, do you want to end us with the wise words or maybe oh our God, young ladies have wise words for us? I just hate that this is over so quickly. I mean, we just, I, I, I want to hear from you all. Um, if you have any questions that I can answer, I'm not, I, I'm a little rough around the edges. You know, I make a lot of jokes, not as poised as I, you know, possibly could be. Um, however, I, I feel that being genuine is the most important thing just in life. Always be yourself. Um, no matter what anybody else says, you have to be yourself and, and it will always win whenever. And so any questions that you all have, um, and just, just any, any questions, it doesn't have to be related to virtual learning. I do have one, per not personal question, but it's not necessarily related to what you just said. Will this be, well, no, I just answered my own question. Never mind. Um, I, yeah, I'm just going to stop talking because I, I lost my, my thought. <laughs> it's fine. I do it all the time. <laughs> Anybody else? Does anybody else have a question? I don't have a question, but I don't see any more questions in the chat. 
Okay, no worries. Um, so, and just, I know that you all were on here and you're saying you want to talk about, you know, what virtual learning and, and things like this, but um, I do want you to tell me just a little bit about like your day-to-day -day school. I know we only have two minutes. So just somebody that can just um, really just sum it up to just what you do like on a day-to-day -day basis, like within your school, like the different types of like um, subjects you take and those, just those things, but just more curious. Can I answer this one, y'all? So um, my day, I wake up at five. I know that's really early, but I swim in the morning with my best friend and I go back to bed and then I wake up. We have something called morning meetings on Mondays and Wednesdays where we kind of go in, we watch slides about our week. What are we doing? What clothes are happening? Then you typically have your first class from around 9.04 to 10.08. And that class for me is AP Computer Science A. That's our elective. Our, all of our electives are computer science based. And then you'll have your next class, which is global studies. That class is a combination of history and English because it's designed to get both credits in a short amount of time. That way we can, because our school offers an associate's degree program. So it's for the associate's degree students to kind of like breeze through those classes. Next, you'll have your third class, which for I think all of us here, except for Kaylee, it is algebra two because you got to take, I think it was algebra one in seventh grader maybe. And then we have lunch where we typically do our clubs. We do that in person as well. And then you'll have your fourth rotation, which is typically is for me, it's PLT, which is something called personal learning time. We adapted, we adopted that last year, which is basically when you work on all of your online classes beforehand. So languages, health and PE, um, econ and personal finance. And then we'll have our final rotation, which for me is physics. But typically throughout a day, you don't usually have a breakout for each class every day. Um, sometimes you'll have days where you don't see, let's say your math teacher, and then the next day you will. So usually I see most of my teachers on Mondays and Thursdays, and then on Tuesdays and Fridays, I'll only see a few of them. And then Wednesdays is um, kind of like, it's called a flex day where the first half of the day is basically you get all your work done or you get caught up. And then the second half is our normal schedule, but every single class is shortened to 30 minutes. So you have a lot of options and you have choice. And I think that's so important um, to have choice when you're um, taking classes and just, just, you know, being able to be in high school. I think, you know, that that's really unique for the classes that you all are taking. And you're really, really fortunate. I mean, some high schools are just so totally different from what you all are doing. And I think that's like an ideal like place to be. Like you all should be, I mean, that's just amazing to hear, seriously. And I'm not just, you know, just saying this. That's that. I mean, I, you know, I taught high school for a long time. And I think, you know, for you all to be able to have that choice and, and, and choose what you're going to do really, you know, it really pro projects where you're going to be in the long run and you're able to do that because you're going to have to do that work, you know. My job, you know, my, um, you know, I, we have things that we have to do, but we have choice and we might, you know, go to lunch here or, you know, meet with our teammates here, but then we might have to come back together and collaborate together and, and, and make sure that, you know, one sounding voice is there and, and get your job done um, as well. And so there, that's kind of what you all are doing on a day-to-day -day basis as well. And so uh, I apply you, Kelly, for going and swimming in the morning times and, I um, mean, then getting back. Um, up to work and so I mean up to work and, and go to school I know we're out of um, time and so Karen I know you want to um, um, close us out but I am appreciative just to hear from you all I'm honored to just even have this conversation with you all I'm, I'm on Twitter if you ever want to DM me and, and have any advice or any I mean need any advice um, please um, let me know I'm, I'm always um, here and thank you for just majoring in, I mean taking those elective classes also in computer science Thank you so much. I knew this was going to go by much too quickly, um, but we really have tried at this seat to feature um, students throughout the years. This has been recorded. I'm hoping maybe someday we can do this face to face. Um, I put Kim's Twitter handle in there. I will also draw attention to the chat. Important for me is content's important. We have all those standards of learning, but learning to function in a workplace like you're describing 
uh, takes a lot of personal accountability. Um, and I like you're using Scrum and Kanban, all those kinds of things that are going to help you be productive. And then honestly, it doesn't really matter sometimes what the job is. I mean, obviously, you can't take something that you know nothing about. Like I would be a pretty lousy uh probably math teacher. I don't know. But anyway, but if you've got those personal accountability skills, I think you can almost do anything, right? You can fake it till you can make it your smart you woman. <laughs> I mean, when right, I right. literally, when I was the director of blended learning, initially, there was no job description. I literally had no plan and I had to turn around 8,000 students in, in service you know, 500 teachers I'm in my previous district. And so I had no plan. I, I, I had nothing to do. So I had to use Google and, and YouTube and call on people. And, and so it's just, you never know. There's no like book, no matter how much school you have, you know, there's no book to say, this is what you do in a day-to-day -day job. Well, thank That's you. Great. Craig had to run. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, Marie. And I think it's okay. please don't close it out completely, though, because I think Kim I and I are going to stick around and have a chat. I'm going to stop. Thank the you so much. Thanks, ladies.